All right, so let's talk about this James Gunn news. I'm really fascinated by this because of the way he talks about the connection to other properties. Like we're talking about like streaming, animation, video games. It's a very weird set of questions and answers. And so I thought we'd go over this. And it says here, James Gunn, some standalone DC projects will still exist outside of the DC universe that connects film, TV, animation, and games. And I'm a little bit confused by some of this uh, back and forth with him. So I I do have faith that James Gunn knows what he's doing in terms of like what his vision is going to be and and how to take care of these characters. But I will say it is a hefty, hefty goal to try and connect not only film and TV, but animation and video games. Are you in the same room as I am with that or or how do you feel about it? Yeah, it seems like such a it sounds like it's a disaster waiting to happen or a very convoluted world waiting to happen where it's i mean people struggle with just having the marvel movies and then having the disney plus shows it's like i can't keep up with them people even just say keeping up with the movies is a struggle so imagine when it's a film tv animation and video games like people some people hate video games just can't get into them i know so and completely cutting a portion of i guess the storyline unless you meant to get hope that they can look it up on YouTube and go like with people when they type in the injustice storyline from the games, they, can just, they go, just want to watch the story. And then you have to watch yeah. five hours of cutscenes. It's it's yeah, yeah. It's so anyway, it says here, James Gunn is the new co-chairman and co-CEO of DC studios along with Peter Saffron. He has confirmed during a Twitter Q and a with fans that the DC universe under his watch will be connected across film, television, animation, and video games. But that doesn't mean Gunn and Saffron are putting a ban on standalone projects that exist outside of the larger interconnected DCU. In recent years, the animated series Harley Quinn and films such as the Joaquin Phoenix starring Joker and Robert Pattinson starring the Batman have told DC stories separate from that of the main DC universe, a.k.a. multiverse or Elseworld. That's what those are. Um, and he said, yes, some. <laughs> Gunn answered when a fan asked, will there be some more standalone animation or live action shows that take place in separate worlds like Harley Quinn? So that was his answer. Yes, some. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Do you, are you like? Do you, I mean that's almost like like a non-answer. Of course, they're not going to give up profitable things. Like Harley Quinn is really doing really well. We don't know where the animation world is going to go. Maybe it's saved now that James Gunn is there. Uh, the the Robert Pattinson Batman, the Joaquin Phoenix Joker. They're not getting rid of those. I don't think there was any world where that was going to happen, right? No. Oh, so. Well. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. I'll say no. I'll say no. Yeah. It was like some like controversy happened. Yeah. So it says Gunn also confirmed that he is planning to give more DC characters their own television series in order to build out the DC universe, adding, yes, most definitely, this DCU will be connected across film and TV and animation. Uh, one fan asked, Are there plans for games to be connected to the DCU as well? Gunn answered, Yes. Okay. So here, let's 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 dive into this one. Okay. Animation is already a tall order, right? Because animated things take much longer to make typically. And um, it almost hurts the replay value of certain things the further you skew away from where the core of something is. I think animation is still in that gray area where some people will, will give it a shot, some people may not. And I think you saw that with Star Wars. There's been the stuff with the Arrowverse where we had the animated stuff that went along with that, even the comic book stuff. When it comes to video games, though, Hollywood constantly misunderstands how video games function as a form of entertainment. They they do have stories and they have dialogue, but they're meant for immersive play. I was literally they're meant for you to one, like yeah. be part of that world. <laughs> I was about to say the one word that they always forget is immersion or yeah. for them to be immersive you know for you to feel like you're in the game or you're in that world and experiencing it yeah that's hard to translate into film there's a lot of games that don't translate well because of that so i think that's a big hurdle that they have to overcome is somehow tackling that and there is a way to do that and this is where my fear comes in a way to do that is to make something that isn't story driven like we're not talking about arkham or you know, injustice. Th like I'm thinking like Fortnite or something along those lines where all it is is a facilitator for skins 
and loot boxes and character things from the movies and TV shows that you can use in game that don't really impact the stories from the movies or, or TV shows. Or it's like a DC Universe Online sort of reboot thing. And it has whenever a new movie or thing comes out, there's like a storyline attached to that. Right movie and or tv show and it's not you know playing out that exact thing but it's maybe something that it's like a prequel you know yeah like you have prequel novels or prequel mm-hmm. comic books something like that yeah and it's like an event sort of thing but then outside of that it's open world or it's whatever it might be that yeah. keeps people coming back to it in between each project now the only issue i have with that well actually there's more than one issue with that the issue i have with that is number one it, like at what point would you be playing a game where you'd reach a, an area of the game where it's a spoiler for something that you haven't seen? You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're a gamer, you don't watch stuff as soon as it comes out and you get to a point in a story where there's a spoiler, you know, like there's something there that ruins the movie or TV show for you because I highly doubt the game is going to facilitate a story into the movies or TV shows. I think it's going to be the other way around. I think the around, movies yeah. or TV shows will filter into the game because that's the like that. Yeah. Like they'll mention like a quick line or something, you know, about like the events before or the events at another time. And that's what the game showcases. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So but I guess my- that's the way that the game tells you like, Whoa, it's a spoiler. Don't click this. Don't continue. Mm-hmm. If you haven't watched, um, uh, the flash too or whatever it yeah, is yeah yeah uh, you know so that's that's a problem for me i feel like that's an issue the other issue is what happens with this game or games once the movies have moved on like what's the draw to pull them in like an online game uh, like you know world of warcraft or final fantasy 11 14 whatever one you're playing those kinds of games um they have to constantly create new stories for people to keep engaged in playing what happens if the stories can't go on in the games because it, they're waiting for a movie or a tv show to come out like what if there's an expansion that's supposed to come out that ties in with you know the flash 2 and the flash 2 gets pushed back for a year does that mean the game's content gets pushed back for a year that's well i think the whole plan is that they'll never face that thing where they are pushing back stuff or if it is pushed back it's followed it's pushed back way in advance to the point where there's not even a tease at what the content is and that it doesn't really affect anything that comes out prior to that. You know, the other thing I have that has me a little bit worried is what if we're thinking about the wrong stuff? What if they're thinking like mobile games, like literal cash shop games where it's just made to advertise like the the movies and the TV shows and stuff like that. Oh, we can flash back to like 10 plus years ago where we get the tie-in games. Remember the tie-in yeah. games? Mm-hmm. I yeah. don't think we'd get that because I think we're at the point. I remember where there's a really bad tie- Thor tie-in game for the for the Thor on the Marvel. A side. lot of those Marvel, those early MCU. I think the Captain America one was okay Yeah. Um, from memory. I remember I used to go to Blockbuster and rent them. Like when Blockbuster yeah. was on its like last legs, I'd go and rent the games. But... I just don't know if you could do that. So it brings up this question, like, what are the games? And are they going to be quality games? Or are you just, are you just games for the sake of maybe a quick crash grab? You know? That's my fear. Like, so fair enough. It, it is exciting if they're planning on doing something like Arkham or something along those lines. But those games are in development sometimes for half a decade. Sometimes yeah. it takes five years to make a game. You're telling me that they're somehow going to line up what that game is going to be when it comes out in five years with the story from the movies. I don't even mm. think Marvel could do that. I feel like that's a, that is a almost impossible thing for them to do to be completely yeah. honest, because a game can get pushed back if there's some development issue with it, or if they rush it out, it could be like a, it could be a dud. I mean, there's been games that have been pushed out too quickly. So as exciting as it is to hear about like this happening, I'm very concerned on how the the application of this is going to be with these crossovers because I want them to focus on just fixing the stuff that's wrong now. Like, get the movies and the TV shows in order and then add other stuff later. This feels, again, like rushing towards a group film to catch up with Marvel before you even have your foundation put down. And that's that's an issue for me. Yeah. I don't I, I don't know why TV and even the, even the animation thing because so many people just are just not going to watch it. Like look yeah. at the difference between people that watch What If and whatever the other Marvel was that, series that came before. A lot after. of people skipped it. A lot of people didn't yeah. watch it at all. 
So it's just like it's going to be hard to convince people to watch animation. So, and I think DC just works when you have animation separate. Just keep it separate. Or it if you really to want connected. to, it doesn't need to. Like the only thing that needs to be connected are the film and even not all the TV does because sometimes you can force it. Right. Like who knows what we're going to get. Like, because some people are, a lot of people think like half of the Disney Plus stuff we're getting doesn't nearly need to be there. It should yeah. just be storylines in the films. But they, I guess, don't want to spend time in the films doing them. Well, you know that I love the idea of Elseworlds and multiverse stuff. I think it's really, that's probably the stuff that I enjoy the most when it comes to DC content. So hearing that they're that they're still doing that, that's a plus for me because that means that we're not going to see like them getting rid of other stuff. And this begs the question, the last thing I want to say here before we stop talking about this topic is this makes me feel better about Superman and Lois because we've had a lot of doom and gloom about like what's going to happen to these shows um you know in these other projects but james gunn to me sounds like he's okay with multiple characters existing which is something that david zaslov has spoken out against we talked about that a couple weeks ago and this to me makes it feel like maybe superman and lois is a little bit safer is that is that is that being too optimistic or what do you think um I think it just depends. Like, I think it's, it'll get to the point. Like, if if James Gunn has a plan for, let's say, a Superman movie, he's got half a script ready, got a director in line to do it, um, and he'll start filming middle of, or maybe not middle, but like, let's say by the end of next year or something. Like, mm-hmm. that'd be rushed as hell, but let's just say it happens. Then there might be the whole thing, well, the, the, the show on the CW can't continue. But by the time that movie comes out, Superman and Lois would probably be able to finish the season four. Right. So it wouldn't be like, you know, I'm going to take this as like, I want to walk away from this article feeling good. So that's my takeaway is that this might mean that we get super. Yo, you living an article but with a good no? That's a change. And... I don't know. There's optimistic. I'm not happy about the video game stuff. So let's look on the sunny side of things and, and see. Okay. So before we wrap so... up this video, as I was editing the clip out of the live stream that you just watched, where we were talking about James Gunn and the future of the DCU, including like live action. TV, movies, video games, cartoons, what that's going to look like. This story came across social media, and I'm like, this got me super excited. I'm not going to read this article because it is a lot of talk that just doesn't really matter much. Really, the story is this. DC is trying to strike an animation deal with Amazon to put it on Prime, and this is where they're going to hopefully send all of the content that does not connect to the DCU. Because what James Gunn was saying, and why I feel like this is a continuation of that conversation, is that he still wants to do stuff that isn't connected to the films and TV shows. So I think, if I'm going out on a limb here, that what's going to happen is all of the stuff that actually connects to like the uh, the DCU will stick in-house, like on the whatever HBO Max and Discovery Plus comes becomes that's where it'll stay. Uh, But everything else will move somewhere else. And the reason why that makes me so happy is if this actually works out and it really is a thing and they sign the paperwork and we get some sort of like, you know, uh, roadmap of where things are going to go. This is where Young Justice and Harley Quinn could end up. Batman, the Cape Crusader. They could all be part of Amazon and love them or hate them. This is a platform that I think would really work for Warner Brothers Discovery to get a lot of content out that they're not using on the their main platform. Also, not just with animation, because I think that there may be something else here. It's quite possible that they come up with some deal for some of the shows that are not connected. So what if something like Titans or Superman and Lois ends up being one of those outliers where they're like, we still want to continue with these, but they don't fit with the DCU. So we don't want to put them on the hybrid streaming service. Where can we put them? They might go to Amazon Prime. So if you're able to get Amazon Prime in your part of the world, this should be really good news because this to me is a nice, uh, you know, cap to the end of that conversation we were having about James Gunn and his future. This is exciting stuff, everyone. So yeah, definitely Keep your eye on this. If this story gets updated, we'll talk about it in the after party. But this is really good news. Um, DC Animation might not have a new, it might have a new home over at Amazon Prime, where we're going to see like Young Justice and and uh, you know Harley Quinn and and these other shows continue to survive uh, outside of this uh, culling over at HBO Max. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, do all the stuff that's scrolling down below. If you want to see this and more of my Twitch content, head over to twitch.tv slash Eric's Reloaded and hit a follow over there. Uh, I'm going to be doing two shows a week over on Twitch to go with my YouTube content. And um, yeah, 
Thanks so much. And uh, leave a comment down below. Take care.